Welcome to the Goodyear City Council meeting. We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker That was quick. She's saying you need to reconvene the meeting and then adjourn it. Oh yeah, I, that's what I was trying to do before. We have a regular meeting so it start at six o'clock. There being no further business to discuss, this meeting's adjourned. Welcome to the Goodyear City Council meeting. We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker request cards are located on the tables outside of Council Chambers. You must fill out a speaker card in order to address the City Council. Please hand in your completed card to the City Clerk before the start of the meeting. If the meeting has already begun, please hand it to any City staff. You may also check the I do not wish to speak option on the card. This allows you to still voice your opinion on an item on the record without having to speak. Public comment on a non-agenda item will take place during the citizen comment portion of the evening. These are items that don't appear on tonight's formal agenda. The city clerk will call your name when it's time for you to speak. At that time, please approach the podium and state your name for the record. We ask that you speak clearly into the microphone. You'll have a maximum of three minutes and there is a timer visible from the podium. When the light changes from green to yellow, your time is coming to an end. When the light turns red, your time is up. Note that you may also choose not to speak if other speakers before you have said what you wanted to say. Shouting, cheering, and loud noises will not be tolerated and violators may be removed for disrupting the meeting. Goodyear City Council meetings stream live on Facebook and YouTube and online at GoodyearAZ.gov. Thank you for your participation in tonight's meeting. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting, October 25th, 2021. Please join Councilmember Laura Tunnell in the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. Dear Father, thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon our community. We are very thankful and truly grateful for all you have done for us. We ask your assistance and your guidance for to make wise decisions for our community and to protect those who protect us at home and abroad. We also ask um, for safety for those and for you to hold close to you those that have lost loved ones in the pandemic. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> no, we're all culminated. We're all present this evening. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address City Council on, non, not, on any non agenda item within the jurisdiction of the Goodyear City Council. Are there any speaker cards? David Reese. There, there are speaker cards. Please come forward. Right there. Oh, here. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I um, think you, I'm sorry, before you start, so you need to say your name. 
My name is David Reese. Okay, and I just want to tell you, it said on on the tape, but you have three minutes, and a yellow light go, will go on, and you'll know you have 20 seconds left to speak. And you begin by identifying yourself. Okay, my name is David Reese. I'm a Goodyear resident. I live in Palm Valley. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure exactly what I even want to ask you to do. Here's the situation I found myself in. Neighbor sells his home. Family buys it. We find out later it's turning into a long-term care facility. Ten beds, which I don't even know how they fit ten beds in the house, but ten-bed facility. Every time you approach the people to talk to them, the doors shut, doors go down. It seemed very under the radar the way it was done. I just want to know, is, is that the way it works? With these care facilities, I mean, I, I'm not even sure it's a care facility. I, it, it could be a halfway house. It could be, a, and then the neighbors, we all talk about it. Everyone's trying to look up rules. It's very complicated. I mean, we're not a lawyer. But from what I understand, you can't have one within a quarter of a mile of another one. It violates that rule. I called the HOA about parking. They say there's nothing they can do about it because it comes under ADA. And we invested in this home. You know what I mean? We invested uh, everything in this home. You know, this is like I, my wife would definitely outlive me. This is her retirement. And I, it, nobody said anything to us. Even the fellow that sold the house called me. He said, I had no idea. I thought it was just, you know, a mom and pop moving in with their kids. And, and that's about it. That's my whole thing. But somebody needs to, I mean, it just doesn't seem right. And not, and not that I have, a, it, it maybe turned out to be a great thing. But it just seems the way it's being done, under the radar, and nobody telling anybody, it's kind of sketchy to me. I mean, would any of you want that to happen in your neighborhood or to your kids? You know what I mean? They buy a home, they make a big investment, they want to raise their family, and all of a sudden the house across the street has four parking spaces. It just doesn't seem right, and you can save my time. Well, I appreciate you coming forth. It's always difficult, especially when you're emotional about something, and I, I can understand that. So I, what I'm going to do today is address it to the staff, uh, and somebody will be in, in, in communication with you uh, to explain all the situation to see if there is anything they can help. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I doubt there's anything you can do for me. But if something could be done to maybe streamline it so people know what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, because when you don't know, you start thinking what's going on. That's not always healthy. So okay. thank you again. Thanks for your time, folks. Mayor, I think we, we can comment on, on this. Don't don't take off just right. yet. There's a comment that wants to be made. Go ahead, Bill. So you're going to you're going to get great interaction with our staff there's no question about that but for everybody who's sitting here going what the hell's going on we don't control when those come in and i think you're going to hear that from katie but i wanted everybody else sitting here to hear that that they that never comes to us i don't I'm, well, I'm the responding lawyers, to the, the lawyers comment looking at me us not doing anything so i'm okay, pushing it over the lawyer we have a limited ability to con uh, to respond right. to criticism i just wanted to just say that doesn't come before us and that I'm going to ask Katie to please get your email address. I'd like to communicate with you myself afterward. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> it's not you that we worry about. It's the Goldwater Institute. Thank you. I just want to make sure we were doing this legally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other cards? Okay. There are no more other cards, so will the city clerk please read consent agenda items one through seven by title only, please? Number one, approval of minutes. Number two, approve the creation of the Western Avenue project and associated budget transfers. Number three, approve budget transfers. Number four, approve the intergovernmental agreement with the city of Phoenix for the administration of the Department of Justice Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. Number five, accept an emergency government services access easement for the Compass Data Center's development. Number six, adopt resolution number 2021-2184, approving the letter of intent for acquisition of real property, authorizing the city manager to enter into a purchase agreement consistent with the terms of the letter of intent, authorizing the city manager or her designee to take actions and execute documents necessary to acquire the real property, 
authorizing and approving the required budget transfer and providing for an effective date. Number seven, adopt resolution number 2021-2187, approving the letter of intent for acquisition of real property, authorizing the city manager to enter into a purchase agreement consistent with the terms of the letter of intent, authorizing the city manager or her designee to take actions and execute documents necessary to acquire the real property, authorizing and approving the required budget transfer and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Does anyone in the council wish to remove an item from this consent agenda? Mayor, I have a question on item number. Which one? Two. I think it's two. Approve the creation of Western Avenue project. Uh, so we need something on the budget. You're asking about the, um, uh, I'm asking the transfer. What, what the urgency is. Number two, is that what you asked? I think he's going to come up. Is this uh, Sumit, I believe? This is the um, approved creation of the Western Avenue project and associated budget transfers. I wasn't sure which one of you. Yeah, I said. <laughs> yeah. You get both. Please announce your names. Mario Saldamando. And Sumit Mohan. So my question was, what's the urgency? We've been talking about this property for four or five or six years. So what's the urgency to move it up in front of other projects that are on the CIP? Uh, th thank you. Thank you for the question, uh, Mayor and Council Member uh, Campbell. Um, it's not so much the urgency of moving it forward, but just uh, it's in our capital program so we can address it uh, and uh, among other projects that we are also working on. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming out. Mayor. Pardon me. Oh, I'm I, sorry. Uh, Councilman Lortano, I'm sorry. I'd like to remove number two from the consent agenda and vote on that one separately. Same one. Same one. I don't know if I did that correctly. Would you ask your question again? I, I said I would like to vote can we remove you said if anyone would like to remove one from the consent agenda I would like to remove number two yeah. I believe it is the one Wally just councilman Campbell just brought up and vote on that one separately I'm going to turn it over oh. so then since number two is being removed then you'll just need a vote um, a motion and a second to approve items number one three through seven all right then make the motion so moved second all right, a motion was moved. Um, by a, a motion is to move number three to, to where to the a motion to approve items one and three through okay. Seven. Motion to approve all items except number three, yeah. Number two, uh, two. and number two, no, nope, except number, for number two. two. My motion except is to number two. approve all. consent items one and three through seven. All right, second. Good. We have a second. All right. No other comments. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you for helping me through that. Sure. Appreciate it. All right. There are three public hearings on the agenda. Now we need to go back to number two. Now we do number two. Now what? Now we do number two. All right. So we're on number two. So I need a motion and a second for number two. Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Stiff, and <clears throat> a second by Councilman Vazello. Open for council discussion. Councilman Stiff. Okay, so this is the item that we have talked about for probably four years. And at the last work session and council meeting, we gave direction to staff to take this action. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct. And okay, I remember so, that we did. So it was an actual vote. If I could, it, if I could interject, it was not a work session. It was an actual. It vote was of an council. actual vote. Okay. So we've already taken council action. So this is to execute that council action. Correct. That is correct. All right. Thanks. All right. Any other comment? I have a comment, Mayor. The question isn't that we didn't approve it or did approve it. What I want to know is what's the urgency to move it up in the CIP, and are we knocking? a more important CIP project 
down one notch because we're sticking this one up there. If we've been talking about this for four years, it's not urgent. That's what I, 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 I wanna know. Um, so if I could, when the CIP was created, this had not been approved by council. So we needed to interject it into the CIP and this is uh, to do that and also adding the associated budget transfers to make that happen. Um, it is not displacing any other projects that we have planned. So we talked about it in July and so now it's coming forward to be put in the CIP starting November 1. Correct, with the associated budget transfer. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Just so you, the people know, I was against it when we talked about it in July, so that's why I had it removed for a separate vote. All right. Any other comments? Are we ready to vote on this? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nay. Nay. Did you get the nays? There's three of us. Um, I believe the nays are Councilmember Campbell, Vice Mayor Hampton, and Councilmember Loretano. So it ends up what number? Four three. Four three. Four three. Four three. All right. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> We're on number seven. Adopt the resolution number twenty twenty one dash twenty one eighty seven, approving the letter of intent for acquisition of real property, authorizing city manager to enter into a purchase agreement consistent with the terms of the letter of intent authorizing the city manager or her designee to take action and execute documents. Mayor, we're we're actually, actually on my off something tonight. Yeah, we're actually actually on the maybe I should go back out and come back in. Where are we? <laughs> number eight with the public hearings. Oh, we're number where? Eight. 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 Oh, okay. Thank you. Really sorry about that. So I ordered the public hearing. Yes, thank you. You're all being very helpful tonight. Thank you. Maybe I shouldn't have tried these hearing aids and I should have put the right ones on and that <laughs> is our problem. But in the middle of the meeting, I'm not sure we can do that. Do you need to, we can take a quick break. All right, I'll just keep going. Okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. There are three public hearings on the agenda. The first public hearing is item is to rezone Hancock Canyon at Canyon Trails North. Public hearing is open. Alex Latinsky, senior planner, is presenting. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, as you mentioned, the Hancock communities at Canyon Trails North PAD. Um, the subject property is located at the southeast corner of Cotton Lane and Garfield Street. Uh, Cotton Lane is a frontage road just east of the 303. Um, there's a southbound Cotton Lane Road to the west of the 303. Um, Garfield Street runs east-west. Uh, just to the east of the subject property is the Desert Thunder Elementary School. Um, down south here you have Van Buren. Oops. Southwest um, of Van Buren and Cotton is the Hancock at Cannon Trails South project. Um, that was rezoned in 2018, the north half, and then 2019, I believe. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. They captured that south vacant parcel. <laughs> the north half is under construction currently. Um, and then we've got the deer run at Canyon Trails as an existing, um, I think it's court homes or townhomes or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then, so in the Canyon Trails planned area development, um, the subject property is zoned oh. medium high density residential okay, and then bro here. broken down e even further to the west this box here is a court home product and then to the east this little pie shape is a townhome product. So within the Canyon Trails PAD today um, the density that could be built is seven to, twen seven to ten dwelling units per acre um, with that property size is approximately 210 units. So Today, 210 units can be built according to the court home, town home standards applicable in the Canyon Trails PAD. Um, to the south is a property currently zoned commercial that's vacant at, um, as well. Uh, I added a couple of slides in, um, thanks to Councilmember Member Kino. Um, the, this is a, a clip from Christian's presentation a couple, or last month, I believe. So just a little bit of PA, uh, Canyon Trails PAD history. 
Um, like I mentioned, Hancock communities had the southwest corner of Cotton Lane and you, or Van Buren, excuse me, um, that's currently under development called the Terra Lane Project. So this will be their technically third project in this corridor. Um, recently, you've seen the Aviata uh, multifamily project. And then last month was the Canyon Trails Town Center project within the Target Supercenter. Um, we also have DeRosia Ranch further south, and then the Hillstone development, which is under construction. Um, Cascade Falls was recently rezoned in the past year or two, I believe, and then La Ventia is obviously constructed. So breaking down a little bit further, this is the larger scale area map of uh, projects established in the orange, um, zoned already in the yellow, under construction in the purple, and then um, a developer interest submitted multifamily. So either pre-app was held or the application was submitted in the blue. And then Hancock North is right here in the, in the blue here by the star. Going a little bit zoomed in in the area, um, this is a breakdown of single family rentals versus the traditional multifamily. So I'll just call them out here because I know it's a little hard to see from afar. Um, the, air, the little box is Hancock at, tra at Canyon Trails North, which is under discussion today. To the north of that was already zoned for multifamily within the Canyon Trails PAD, um, and the applicant has submitted for a single family rental on that property. Uh, as I mentioned, the southwest corner of Van Buren and Cotton Lane is the Hancock project, which is single family rental. Um, east of, moving down east of Cotton Lane is uh, two traditional multifamily proposals. Uh, the Hillstone, which is single family rental. DeRosier proposed for single family rental. Cotton Commons, further south on Lower Buckeye was that mix of traditional multifamily and a single family rental. And then the Vita communities, now Isola, um, is uh, working on their permits currently, but was designated for single family rentals as well. So the request tonight is to rezone that property to MF12, the city's multifamily, lower density multifamily district, with a PAD overlay. The PAD overlay includes only one standard that's different from what the city requires, and that's a rear yard setback reduction from 30 feet to 20 feet. Staff is supportive of this uh, proposed deviation um, for two main reasons. One, we have seen the MF12s develop with the 20 foot setback um, on that rear side. It is um, similar to what we've seen with all of the ones that have developed. Additionally, um, the rear would be considered this east half, and it's up against that 100 foot um, trail that, that cuts through between this property and then the Canyon Trail single family residential. So there is an existing additional buffer between single family homes and single family rentals. And as always, the, the site plan and exhibits included are conceptual. Um, if approved, the applicant would move forward with the, the design review process. Um, in this product, though, they are proposing uh, attached garages with these units, which you'll see the elevations and how those fit in here. Um, that's the conceptual landscape plan. So the, the main points of access are onto Garfield Street, whoops, and then a proposed future um, connection to the Cotton Lane northbound frontage road, if approved by ADOT. So this is a conceptual elevation of one bedrooms with garages. So in the center here, you can see two garage units that are attached to the units themselves. And then in front, they would have a driveway. Um, this is a two bedroom with a garage elevation and they are proposing the three different styles as required by the multifamily uh, design guidelines. And then this one's a one bedroom without a garage, so those are a duplex type unit. A two bedroom without a garage, and those are single units. And then two bedroom duplex style without garages. The neighborhood meeting was held via Zoom on June 8th. There was one couple who joined the call. Um, they lived south of Van Buren and were just curious to see what was going on, did not have any objections. Staff has not received any additional objections or any objections, period. 
Um, the Planning Commission held the public hearing on uh, October 13th, and the Commission recommended approval 5 to 0. That concludes my presentation. Um, Paul Gilbert is here on behalf of Andy Jokums, who was the applicant on record. So if you have any questions for him, he can answer those as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do, lawyer, I'm going to do something unusual. I have to admit I wear hearing aids, and they're not working. And so we have some they can put on it. And I feel this, this session is very important, and I want to hear what everybody has to say clearly. This one I knew quite well, and so I was fine with it. So if you'll excuse us, and you can have a little teeny conversation in between while I unplug and plug back in, okay? I appreciate it. I think Hello. Think the Test. Sing you a little song. Not for me. Oh, here there. it comes. One, two, three. Oh, at last, I have life. Three, two, Praise one. How about that? Okay, then we're on it. So let's go back to your finish. As you said, the applicant was here. All right. So he would like to speak. All right. Let me explain. You have ten minutes to speak. It's too late now. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I'll be briefer than 10 minutes. Paul Gilbert, um, pleased to be here this evening. Uh, I intend to be very brief and hope, perhaps naively, that my brevity will be rewarded. A <laughs> um, couple of just quick comments to make. We're here on behalf of Hancock Communities. It's a very well-known developer. You know the quality of his product here, and I don't think I need to reiterate that. As we reason together, it's important to focus on this very critical issue, and that is the property is already zoned for medium density residential. So the medium density residential category is already on the property, and we're not increasing the density in any significant amount over what is already there and approved. Uh, there is no opposition. Both recommending bodies to you, your staff, as well as a unanimous planning commission has recommended approval. Uh, these units are very high quality units and we're providing garages for 43% of the units, which is a very uh, upgrade over what is typically found in many of these units. Um, we also have another 16 garages that are available that our other uh, renters can rent as well. Um, the project is adjacent, of course, to the Loop 303 transit corridor and is separated by a frontage road. Importantly, multifamily uses which is exactly what we're proposing, are encouraged along the freeway corridors by your general plan. Um, the staff has made a specific finding in your staff report that this project is compatible with the surrounding area. We're consistent with the requirements of Luke Air Force Base. We meet all the requirements also for the Phoenix Goodyear Airport. So, Importantly, too, this uh, modification of the Canyon Trails plan does not exceed the overall density cap that was on the Canyon Trails. So all these things, I think, combine to make this a project worthy of your, rec of your approval and consistent with your staff recommendation and the Planning Commission. 
pretty good for me to be that brief, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate you following the rules. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. And will the city clerk please read resolution number 2021-2179 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2021-2179, declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled Official Supplementary Zoning Map 21-06 Rezone from PAD to MF12 and Legal Description Canyon Trails North. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to approve resolution 2021-2179? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. Yeah. Councilman Campbell made the motion. Who seconds it? Right here. Mayor, right here. Okay. Councilman Pazillo is seconding it. Open for council discussion. No discussion? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see you. Thank you, Laura. Alex? Thank you for coming back. Um, you mentioned that it's existing. Um, is uh, zoned for court homes and townhomes. Correct. Okay, and, and you said, or something, is it, is it though, is there something else? Uh, Mayor Councilman McKenna, thank you. Um, in, the, in the Canyon Trails PAD, the district is medium high density residential, and it just designed kind of within that two districts. The district uh, definitions weren't very specific. They didn't have a development uh, setbacks, all that like we have in the zoning ordinance. But uh, that's kind of why I generalized it a little bit. But okay. but yes, it, it called it out as court homes and then town homes. Town homes. Okay. And then so essentially the density is about the same, whether it's the rentals or or as previously the zoned, estimated, or as currently zoned. Yes. The estimated um, density for the court home was about seven dwelling units called out in the PAD. Um, and then in the townhomes was about 10 dwelling units. I didn't, when I was looking back in the PAD, I didn't see a cap on what that density was, but that was what they were planning for. Okay. Well, we've had ongoing, ongoing discussion as each of these parcels comes up on either side of the loop 303. And uh, certainly there is increased density. I know that on the west side, there are uh, two, um, properties, lots uh, that are the single family rentals. And then now on this side, up at the uh, north of this property that we're discussing is single family rentals, and then wanting to add additional single family rentals. I, um, I, I struggle with the, the back to back uh, properties like that. They're, they're kind of repetitious, although I do admire the creativity with the addition of the garages in this because I haven't seen that before. I think the elevations are are good, but I am very hesitant to change from uh, a property product that I think is really needed here of the townhomes and the court homes, and um, we'll be voting no. Yes, Councilman Sip. You know, um, I, I don't disagree with much of what you said. Um, however, that 303 elevation that we saw a couple of weeks ago um, gets in the way of me wanting to put homeowners in that area. Um, I know uh, the Hancock property uh, projects are very high quality, uh, bring a real, uh, I'm going to say, a value to that type of product. Um, and now the addition of, um, of garages, I think, is very, very unique. Um, and given what this is going to develop in in the next 10 years, um, I almost can't see anything but this product uh, in there. So, um, and I've asked previously that um, we start to see that elevation again every time that this, anything that comes up along that 303 corridor going south, we should be seeing what that elevation looks like because um, until we actually saw the graphic, I don't think you have an idea how really high that's going to be. And to ask someone to purchase a property in there, um, as opposed to uh, coming in and coming out with uh, with rental. Um, the average rents for this, if someone can speak to that, uh, where are we at on rentals on this, at rental costs? 
I know Alex doesn't know. But just a range because we're not committing to anything tonight. But I understand that, and this is just a range. But uh, they're uh, around twelve hundred a unit for a one bedroom. Uh, that would be a two bedroom. I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah. And most of these are two bedroom. Nice. Okay. So we're actually more in the affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I hate to say twelve hundred is affordable anymore, but that's really where we're at because most of our rentals are going for seventeen to. Two thousand dollars a month. So at twelve hundred, that's a bargain. Yeah. Um, but all right, thanks. So um, for those reasons, while I don't disagree at all with Councilmember Kano uh, on those points, but for the reasons that I stated, I I will support um, this project. Councilman Lower Town. I, I have many of the same concerns Councilmember Kano had about the the property stock that we need. Um, because we do need a, a variety and some more of these owner occupied, but I have to agree with council member Stipp is where that freeway, cause I drive by that a lot. That's going to be so, if it was sunk, I think we'd have a better, if it was like below ground, I think you'd have a, I, I don't know, it'd probably be a better argument to say someone would buy it. Cause I'm, I look at that property. It's like, I don't see people. I mean, maybe obviously for the right price, but I, everything is just so crazy right now. Pay, spending four hundred fifty, five hundred thousand dollars to be right on the freeway. Um, I do like the fact that they have garages. That the percent you do have garages. Will those be available, or the ability to plug in an electric vehicle in those garages? I think I asked you that at the thing. Yeah. Mm. That, that's a very good and timely question, and we are in a transition mode right now, and we're giving some serious consideration to providing for electrical vehicles, but we haven't made that decision yet on this piece. Um, so um, I, well, I, I can't I, I would just say when you're looking at GM and Ford moving their fleets yeah. over to almost 100%, we just talked about a smart yeah. city, that's definitely 100% important to me okay. um, because the people that are going to be buying these are maybe a lot of younger people that before they get a home or moving into you before they get um, by their own home. So I think that's very, very important. Um, for those people in the garage to have those in the garage, the I think it's a 240 outlet or the availability to have that, and I know it's not very expensive to put in. So, no. if, if I had to predict, I would it's just I don't I can't say unequivocally, and that's I want to be truthful up here. Mm -hmm. But if I had to predict, I would say we're going to do that. For example, Hertz just bought what I read 100,000 Teslas. <laughs> Teslas today, so that's clearly the trend. And we like to keep up and need to keep up with the trends. So I think it's very likely we will have these. Um, and then, like I said, I do like the garages. And I, I just want to, uh, the elevations are a good start, but probably work a little bit more. I think that's for the staff to work with on the four-sided right. architecture to kind of make these unique. Um, we don't want them all to look the same and, and, you know, these developments, but they are definitely needed with all the people moving here. And I think Council Member Stitt brought up a good point. The rents... Rents are sky high right now. Housing prices are sky high. So we have to have places that everyone can live in Goodyear. So it, I know Hancock is a beautiful product, and they do great jobs. So add the electric, and I'll love them. All right. <laughs> I'll see that the, that the message I, is delivered. While you're there, so, excuse me, Brandon, when you, so is this going to be an additional feature, or is it going to be standard with the home? Additional features have additional uh, profit on them, and so I don't know what the cost it is, but if you're asking for the entire community, or are you asking that it would be sold as additional? I'm just asking that question. It's the same type that you'd plug your basically dryer into. It's, that, it's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. Yeah, my husband put in one in our garage, and it cost him $25. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> So they are not expensive, and that, that's why I'm very Thank you for clearing that up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Brandon? So these are originally townhouses and courthomes. Do you, do you have the elevation on the freeway 
of this uh, this freeway versus the freeway I-10 and near the other court homes that are off of Cerebral, for example. Is that going to be around the same height? And I know we have a lot of Fulton homes that we have people paid a lot of good out. money right against the I-10 as well. Um, I'm just curious if there's any difference at all between the height or if it's the same as that. Christopher is up here to yep, talk to you. I see him. Mayor, Council, thank you. Um, I actually had the beautiful picture pulled up on my computer. However, it has died, so I can't show it. Um, the design concept report, so that portion that of, of the 303 that is already there, um, they will, when ADOT constructs the rest of 303, um, the design concept report has the main line, the main travel lines at about uh, 16 feet off of current grade. So that's about the elevation at the bottom of the roadway where the tires are running on the cars um, for the future 303 will be elevated about 16 feet. And then at intersections, at the cross grade intersections, it would be 23 feet tall. So it'll, 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 it'll move like this. 303 will move like this as it proceeds south. Do you know how it compares to the I-10? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have that information right now. Okay. We, we can have a council follow up with that one. I was just, I was just curious. I know, I mean, I know, I don't know if it was Bill or someone talking about houses up against the I-10, and I know people have, especially those folded homes, are right up against the I-10, and they feel paid very, very good money for that as well. Um, is there a sound wall part of this as well for the I-10? I know we have the access road between it and the actual 303, but is that yes, part I, of this? I can answer that, and there will be a sound wall, yes. Okay. And then I know we just had our council retreat. We talked a lot about diversity of housing stock and how we'd like to see it. And I mean, I, I do appreciate the garages. I kind of wish that was were in every single story rental property now that I see that that's an option here. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm calling this rental row right here with all of the, all of the rentals that are going to be up and down the 303 here. I'd love to see some townhomes and some, and some actual uh, diversity of housing stock that I know that we keep talking about. And I've seen it proven over off Cerival and the I-10 with the um, court homes and people very happy to be first time home buyers in those time of, time of houses as a transition to a full size house as well. So I don't know, I have a hard time getting behind this one, especially since North is already gonna be the um, more of the same thing and then more of the same thing, I think 150 plus units or something over near the other part of Canyon Trails, the other Hancock property. So, um, yeah, I, like I said, I'd, I'd really like to see some more diversity of housing stock here yeah. as opposed to just rentals. All I can say to comment to that just very quickly is that it's been zoned for this zoning for court homes and town homes for 22 years. Yeah. And it hasn't developed. I submit there's a reason that it hasn't developed. And those are some of the reasons we've been talking about tonight, the height differential and so on. I, yeah. I think this, that's why this is maybe the only project that could go there and would be feasible given these unique circumstances. Yeah, and I know you guys have done the data and the research and mm -hmm. put, in, put money towards developing yeah. this type of product. So I just, right. I don't know. I just wonder, I know now is the time for a lot of things, yeah. so. Well, we have a waiting list at every single one of our projects, so every single thing we built out there, there's been a ready, available market as fast as we can build them. So there's a very keen, vigorous market for this type of product in this location. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. You, you know, I... Alex, you showed uh, a map of the area. Um, that one right there, that's perfect. I, I think when we start talking about what are we doing in the future, that, that DeRosier Ranch property is the one I think that's ripe for what you're talking about. Mult, uh, court home, owner occupied, it's fronted on Yuma, it's not fronted on, you know, I think that when we start talking about those things, but everything that we've been, uh, that we have been talking about as of late has been these projects that are right along the 303. And, and 
um, but I, and I absolutely agree that we need to start moving toward owner occupied court home, town home, but away from these freeways. I mean, that freeway is ripe for this multifamily. I just wanted to throw that out there because Kate, um, Alex put the map of uh, DeRosier on here. Councilman Casillo. Yeah, I, I agree that it would be nice to have different housing stocks or occupied, but with that being said, I'm not ever been a big fan of those homes alongside freeways. I think long term, um, it's just a bad placement of homes along the freeway, especially when you've got them 16 feet above. Eventually, you're going to hear all kinds of complaints from the traffic, no matter what they do with that. Uh, the other question I have, though, um, is when you go through the design, and it looks good, I, I like the garages, but the color palette of some of them, so they're not all the same, good point. Um, if you would, and you know how we feel about those color palettes, but I like the garages, that's a nice touch there, uh, but to mix some of those color palettes, just like in the neighborhood, so you're not going down, and they all look the same, mix them up a little bit, get some nice colors in there. Good. We understand that. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Well, the magic word was when he said affordable housing. Yeah. And we were talking about making that happen. Um, there's something to consider, I understand, about being close to the highway. We've had the discussion before. Uh, but if you, if you drive through the valley, you see many of those, many of those just why. And why are those there? A couple reasons. Affordable and access quickly to the, to the highway. And um, I, I think there's a couple places, if staff could tell it, you can go look at that and see that. There's some of them are butted right up next to uh, the fence line. So um, I think it's a good design. And the one thing I really wanted to happen is when you say affordable, but it's a nice elevation. When they walk to the front door, they're proud of the home and what it looks like and the neighborhood, okay? So affordable shouldn't mean you're going to cut everything. Exactly All right? right. Affordable just means that this is, this is where our society is right now. This is where, yeah. and it's too bad, but it's, it's hard to control this. It's beyond ours. It's, it's uh, beyond us uh, changing that. But in this case, it does give us the right to put something in there that will be usable uh, for the citizens. So I'm in agreement that it would be nice if an elevation had some variance in between the house, houses, every three house, whatever, uh, it would be nice. So I think I'd like to see something like that. You realize, of course, that we're not asking for approval tonight for the elevations. We have to come back. Yes, I do. And get your approval. Except so when you you've go got to crack at us, and you've told us what you want. <laughs> but, so but we're, realize, we're listening. You're presenting this tonight, and you're going to go back and talk to the rest of the team. That's so right. I just want to assure that you're clear in your mind uh, how we feel. <laughs> you've made it very clear, Mayor. And All right. Thank you. And Any fellow. other comments? All right. I think we're ready to vote on this. Should we do a roll call vote on this because of uh, it's it's just a resolution, okay, Mayor? All right, you sure? And it's just for the documents okay. at this time. Okay. Declaring a public all right. Can, okay. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose. Nay. Nay. Was that two nays? All right. Will the city clerk please read ordinance number twenty twenty one dash fifteen eighteen by title only, please? Adopt ordinance number 2021-1518, conditionally rezoning approximately 31 acres of land located at the southeast corner of Cotton Lane and Garfield Street from the Canyon Trails Phase 1 planned area development to the multifamily MF12 zoning district with the pad overlay. Amending the zoning map of the City of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, and providing for penalties. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to approve ordinance number 2021? 1-1518. So moved. Second. Uh, was that Councilman Stiff? No. Nope. Councilman Bazillo. Bazillo and Hampton. Councilman Bazillo made the motion. And did you make the second? And Okay. Yeah. Councilman yeah. Hampton made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. 
So city clerk, you have that? I do. All right, thank you. The next public hearing item is a request to approve a use permit for an A convenience use superstar car wash. Open the public hearing. Steve Kuroshi, presenting, principal planner. Mayor, council members, good evening. Steve Coreccia, principal planner. Tonight we have a use permit before you for a car wash. And that car wash is located McDowell Road, Bullard, and I-10 right here. And this is an overall property. It's zoned C2 General Commercial. The car wash parcel itself is right here, this parcel right here, right off of McDowell Road. Access to the parcel, you'll see a little driveway cut here. So this will be a future drive right in, right out that will connect north-south and connect to the rest of the center. We also have a three-quarter access right here, uh, right in, right out, and a left in coming northbound. And then another right in, right out access point here. Uh, surrounding this property, it's generally all commercial Nearest residential is about 1,300 feet to the north here, a multifamily complex, and about 2,000 feet to the east here, other side of Lifetime Fitness there uh, within Palm Valley. And for background, again, that property is all zoned C2, general commercial, back in 2007. Uh, we've had a few site plans approved over the years, uh, for, specifically for the two hotels that you see developed on the site right now. Uh, we also have a comprehensive sign package that applies to the property and a preliminary plat that was approved in 2021. And what that did was that subdivided the property with that frontage along McDowell Road into three lots. And this lot here, this lot one, this was a QT that the commission and council saw a few months ago. So we have QT going here. This is the pros car wash site. And this third parcel at this time, we have no development plans for this parcel right here. And so tonight is a car wash in the C2. That car wash use requires approval of a use permit. So on that roughly 1.27 acre parcel, you're gonna have about a 4487 square foot building. And in that building will be the car wash tunnel, office and equipment. Uh, we'll have three pay station and 28 vacuum spaces. And this is the site plan showing all of that, those improvements. So here are the 28 vacuum spaces along here. This will be the queuing and the pay stations, the three pay stations. So cars will enter in here, pay, drive up north, enter the tunnel, car wash. And then as they come out, you can go, you know, west or east. If you go back east, you can come in and get vacuuming, or you could do it before you enter the car wash. But those will be the options facing customers. Also wanted to point out that city code has a standard that we prohibit car wash bays from facing public streets. However, to address that, uh, we have permitted developments to screen the car wash tunnels. So what the applicant did was They'll put landscape berms along McDowell Road, along with the 42-inch decorative screen wall. So we'll have landscaping, landscape berms, and the screen wall. These are the proposed elevations for the car wash building. Again, north side, this will be the tunnel exit and the entrance here. So basically we have a long, narrow building. So these are the two elevations that we'll primarily see. And this is the elevation that you'll see as you're heading eastbound on McDowell. So the applicant did add architectural elements and windows to this elevation. So for any use permit, we have two major criteria that we look at, that it's not detrimental to the area and it's gonna be compatible 
So in looking at a car wash, the main thing we wanted to look at was the noise. And in looking at the application, the, app the applicant did place most of the sound generating equipment within enclosures. The dryer type equipment that's within the tunnel, the applicant will be put soundproofing fibers and boards within the tunnel with the intent to reduce noise trespass from the car wash. Again, we talked about the nearest residential is far away relatively, so we're not expecting any noise issues or noise trespass affecting residential. And a lot of this staff, we did rely on a noise assessment provided by the applicant and addressed a few stipulations based on that noise assessment. So I'll go to that document here. And this diagram is just showing how the noise will radiate out from the car wash. Again, the exit here and the entrance, you can see that noise kind of like an hourglass out from the entrance and exit. As we look at it, as it radiates out, as we get to other uses within this property or across the street or at the west property line, we see those, we saw those noise levels dropping down to basic background noise levels. And I should point out that at this time, these are estimates for noise. So when the car wash is constructed and all the equipment is installed, there'll be a requirement that before they do get a final certificate of occupancy, they will have to do a noise study and confirm that the noise levels are consistent with these estimates that staff, the commission and council have looked at. There are several other criteria that staff looked at, the parcel size, hours of operation, traffic mitigation. A couple of these that I'll focus on would be traffic mitigation. At this time, in looking at the traffic report, staff did not see that the queuing or backups, if there were any, would affect any of our public streets. They could have queuing within their center, but we did not see any issues with backups onto either McDowell Road or Bullard Avenue. And then regarding other concerns, really other than the noise at this point, we did not have any. So public participation, we did follow all the standards required by the state and our own codes. We did have the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on October 13th. To date, staff has not received any opposition to the project. Our notice did reach other users within this center as part of our mailing. Uh, staff did not receive any letters of opposition or inquiries opposing this use. So we do find that it does meet all of our evaluation criteria. Uh, staff and the Planning and Zoning Commission were both recommending approval subject to the 12 stipulations in the staff report. Uh, with that, Mayor, that concludes my presentation. Uh, staff's available for questions. Uh, the applicant's team, they're here tonight. They're also available for questions. Oh, would they like to speak or just be ready for a question? I believe they might have a presentation. Oh, want to address that? Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Lord, city council members. My name is Christopher Barta. I am the project manager at Collie Architects and the applicant for this project. Uh, we also have the client uh, ownership representatives available for any questions you may have. Uh, I just want to start off, and I'd like to be brief as well. I want to thank Steve for a very good, thorough presentation. And I just want to add a couple things to that because uh, this is our first opportunity in Goodyear. This is my opportunity to introduce you to the Superstar Car, Superstar Car Wash product. We have other projects in the works all over the valley. There's another one coming up in Goodyear in the near future. And I want to compliment the city staff that we've worked with from the very beginning with the pre-apps. Uh, they've had all the same concerns and questions for us that we've addressed that we have at pretty much every city. And I know that this client of ours is, is very concerned about the kind of things that you probably have on your mind as well. 
And I think Steve did an excellent job showing how we've addressed the concerns about noise, for example. The, the reports that we've had produced do show, and I appreciate how the, the slide showed a comparison to other relative noise levels. And, and thank you. And I, I think that the important thing about this too is that you know we went through planning and zoning, we got a unanimous approval, and they can uh, they wisely put a stipulation in there that we prove after the fact that these are the noise levels we expect, and that the certificate of occupancy won't be issued until we demonstrate that that's what you're going to get. So I just wanted to remind you that you have that confidence in what we're showing here because we're willing to address it like we have at every step of the way. And I, I just want to conclude with, um, you know, the, the Superstar Car Wash product is a little different than some other of our competitors in terms of the quality of the design and the thought that they put into how we uh, adjust the product and by that, I mean, we're looking at everything in site planning uh, for the queuing and meeting the needs for that area and making sure that things run smoothly. To that end, if there's any questions about how they uh, operate as a company and how they are on each site, uh, as I said, I've got some representatives here from Superstar who would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. Then I'm going to close the public hearing. Can I have a motion, a second, to approve the request for a use permit for a convenient use car wash to be constructed on approximately 1.27 acres within the property identified as Lot 2 in the approved preliminary plat for Quick Trip Store number 1417, a copy of which is attached here to as reflected in a conceptual site plan attached here to, which is located in the C2, which is General Commercial Zoning District subject to stipulations. Open for council discussion. We need a motion. Boy, this is not my night for sure. Sorry, guys. Do I hear a motion and a second? Let me hear that motion. So moved. Second. second. I heard a motion from Council of Campbell and the second from Councilman Bazillo. Open for council discussion. Councilman Loritano. I just have a quick question. I you you probably Chris can can answer it. Um, when I'm looking at the vacuum bays, it's on like the one the black and white one this um, schematic. Yeah, that's our site plan. Um, with the site plan, the 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 three queuing lines, they are not going to be queuing into the vacuum area, correct? They that can't. is correct. They access uh, a separate driveway that's entirely on our property. Okay, and there's no way to drive directly from the vacuum to the queuing lines. It's separated. They are separated, yes. Okay, yeah, because that's a, we've had a problem with a couple other ones where then using the vacuums is basically you're taking your life in your own hands to try to get out of there. So I appreciate that. Um, that's a good plan. Thank you. Understood. Councilman Hampton. Yeah. I also had a question on that. Yeah. Just the queuing of that as well. So I mean, that's what I see with some of these is that they, they have a hard time getting in and out of those spaces. So I do like that the design isn't right into you're forced to go into the car wash section. You can't, you can't get out of there. So um, that's good. And then how tall is the canopy on the road, the fencing? Which canopy? The, the, fen the I guess the screening, sorry, the screening to McDowell Road, the uh, red the circle. The screening there. on the north side of the road would be a typical 42-inch masonry wall that you would see around a parking area. And we're also incorporating some berms, and the landscaping would probably be a little taller than that when it's mature. Okay, so we're using mostly trees, landscaping to block. Yes, and the landscaping for this site is a part of the overall development that was approved for the Quick Trip. Yeah. So it would fo it would follow those standards. Okay, and then I do appreciate the the sound. I remember when I went through confined space and other training, the sound. So. I appreciate the sound levels comparisons for everybody as well. Um, I find it hard to believe. So 
We think it'll be above a soft whisper if I'm eating at P.F. Chang's or if I'm across the street at the Burgers Cheddar's or, or if I'm in the hotel. I believe there's a noise receptor pointed out uh, to the south of our parcel. If you, I don't know if you can zoom in, but that's the north end of an adjacent hotel. And I can't read that number from here, but it's definitely below 50. 48, yeah. Yes. So between a soft whisper and an urban residence. So, okay. And then the other line, is that the same, the 48, or is that a little lower or higher for what's going to go in next to hotels? Is the office product, is that, that's farther south, right? I, I believe the building you see on that aerial image is, there, is, there it is. That's uh, one of the two hotels. Okay. Okay, those are the questions I had there. And then I do appreciate all the stipulations. There's a lot of them. Um, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, I think those are most of the questions that I had. Um, was there any comments or any user or I know the zoning commission said yes but was there any comments from any neighbors or landowners mayor council members no comments received okay. okay I'm just curious with the hotel people I know we've had a bad example of a, a car wash near hotels and they do it silencers on their on their uh, on their uh, machines and they don't have a hard time renting out that side of the building so I just was curious if hotels were asked at all as well so okay those are the questions I had thank you councilman Campo so I've got a couple of questions what's your nearest location to Goodyear where you have one now the nearest location that I can think of off the top of my head is actually under construction right now down the road at McDowell and 83rd Avenue Okay. And so it's just within the uh, city of Phoenix limits. Do you normally bill next door to QTs? You know, this is something I learned along the way. Uh, we did get a letter of support from QT, and they mentioned that in there. And the, the fact is that we end up following in their footsteps, apparently, at a lot of locations. So They're very successful, the, the car washes generally that are with the QT. Yes. Because and it, they're, it's an easy driveway to get in, and it's an easy driveway to get out. Yes. So um, my question, um, Steve, is, is there an entrance on McDowell where you can enter or exit this, or is the only way you can get into the car wash is to come down Bullard and turn in by the hotels. Mayor, council members, there is one point of access to this overall center from McDowell. Okay. And that's uh, this yeah, I do, could not really see the right. white corner, I'm sorry. No, okay, it's, so it, we can come in off of McDowell and then come down the road and then get into the queue area and then go through the car wash, come out, if we don't want to vacuum our car, we would have to exit off of Bullard. Or can we go back and exit off of uh, McDowell? Mayor, council members, as you leave the car wash tunnel, if you do take a left, um, you know, go west here, Good. you can hit that driveway, you know, take a right turn then on to McDowell. Be great. Okay, that's great. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, well, it, it's right only because there's a divider in McDowell. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. although I saw a car jump it, so <laughs> what can I say? You have a truck, too. So um, you're going to have the blowers at the end, and they're going to be away from the hotel. That is correct. Uh, I think Steve briefly mentioned it. The noise generating equipment is typically where the blowers are at the exit. And we always like to point them toward the street away from other occupancies. Sometimes it's homes, sometimes it's hotels. Uh, the other thing to know about the noise around these car washes is we have vacuum equipment that is internal to the building, which is channeled underground to those vacuum canopies. Yeah, so the, the noise is, it never is very noisy. It's the dryer coming out of the correct, when you're actually coming out. To, to, you, to, to your question, yes, the blowers are pointed toward the street. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Kano. 
these things are popping up everywhere. I see them uh, everywhere I go throughout uh, just driving around the valley, and certainly they're very popular. And I just learned recently about them that they recyc recycle water. Um, so I'm curious about the water usage, but that they recycle water. Um, Quick Trip is a is a thriving enterprise. I know that every Quick Trip I've ever been to, um, they're popular destinations. They're well run. They're clean. They're safe, and they generate a lot of traffic. And um, I have concerns about placing the car wash in such close proximity to the hotels. We've done that in another area, and you hear the blowers. Um, there is a big, large, empty parcel, if you look at the aerial map, that uh, has been um, undefined, which uh, hopefully will be a restaurant or something. So you're going to, it looks to me like you will have a lot of traffic queuing in off of Bullard. Uh, to access Quick Trip, to access Car Wash, to access whatever ends up on the vacant lock, to access the hotels. And it, it's, it's kind of difficult because we've got the aerial, and then when you scroll down to look at the other one, you can see that there's a north-south corridor. It looks like it runs behind the Quick Trip. So if you come out, out of the out of the uh, car wash and you face the wall and you go right, then you're, you're traversing that north-south uh, corridor that uh, goes behind Quick Trip. Um, that's a lot of traffic that we're running in uh, in a really tight amount of space. And uh, I think we, we've got some very nice office building that's coming up there. I, I don't know if we consider it Class A. It looks to me like Class A offer space. We have the two new brand new hotels. We're going to have a very, very busy quick trip. We don't know what's to the west of it uh, across the street. We hope will become some fabulous development. But um, I think we're putting a lot of traffic and noise in a small amount of space here that would potentially be a problem. Um, if you've ever been to the 40, uh, State 48 on Bell, Bell Road in uh, Surprise, it's right next to a uh, car wash like this. So when you park your car, you hear the blowers. When you're walking into the building, you hear the blowers. It's just that con that blow that blower sound just never stops. And I think that it will impede the um, experience of whatever else is going to come into that. Uh, it looks to me like your sound footprint exceeds out beyond your your property where where it goes and i know that there's a lot of technology and such but i'm i'm really concerned about the internal queuing um if you've ever been to the panera and circle k uh, lunchtime good luck that that's a little crazy through there and that's not even fully developed i think we have a very small internal uh road to try to move a lot of traffic the traffic and the noise um I cannot support this use permit. That, that was a lot of points, if I may. If I, I'd like to respond to a, a couple of those. Uh, I'm going to have Tim address the uh, the water reclamation question first, since he's familiar with their facilities and their equipment. And then I'll touch on some of the other ideas or um, comments that you had, okay? So good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. Thanks for hearing us tonight. Um, Councilman Kano, you wanted to talk about water reclamation? It was just a comment. I, I understand that water is recycled through it those. It is, yeah. yes. But I don't yeah, know so, what your daily usage of water is. I'm curious. So I wanted to point on a couple of the green elements that we do bring to the property. One, as you know, and you've probably learned, is water reclamation and reuse of water. Uh, the second is EV charging, charging stations. We're going to be providing two fully functional, and then we're going to provide expansion uh, through our parking bays to allow for that expansion to continue as the EV grows. Um, in regards to the queuing and uh, in relation to Quick Trip in general, um, I, I know it wasn't presented to you guys tonight, but I have a couple of letters here. Um, one is from Tradecore LLC, which owns the parcel just to the south of us in the Quick Trip. They were also the property owners of the entire lot before it was sold to Quick Trip. 
then sold to us and subdivided and so on and so forth. Um, they wrote us a, a pretty nice letter of recommendation of approval, uh, knowing that we're going here and having dealt with us before and they are planning some multi, multi-story office buildings just to the south of us there. Uh, so they're in support of us. Um, we also received a letter from Quick Trips, uh, real estate and development department. Um, because we, we do coincide with Quick Trip on roughly 11 or 12 different locations throughout the valley. And um, Quick Trip and Superstar Car Wash go together as closely as peanut butter and jelly can and is, as far as similar uses. Um, we do work well with each other. Uh, across the valley in our overall maintenance, cleanliness, our operation, cross access, REAs, all of that, CCNRs, are put in place for Superstar Car Wash and for Quick Trip to function well together. Um, I can assure you, uh, Councilmember Kane, uh, Kano, we, we are addressing the sound. I know that the uh, predecessors and some of the other car washes that are out there have not left you guys with a very warm and fuzzy fuzzy feeling in regards to car washes. Um, the site planning hasn't been done well. The, the noise hasn't been taken care of. The mitigation, the quality of equipment uh, has been really overlooked and, and probably for the savings of money. Uh, we're, we're not interested in that. We're looking to put the best technology in place. We're looking to uh, mitigate and reduce that sound as much as we possibly can. And we'll continue to work with staff to improve on what we've already shown you. Um, I do agree with the uh, Planning Commission stipulation on stipping us with a requirement to prove to everyone in the Planning Commission staff and the City Council that we have to put our money where our mouth is when, when this is all said and done. And I'm confident in putting up $5 million to get this developed and, and prove to you all that we can meet or exceed the decibel levels. And uh, we do have additional sound mitigation that we can do, and, and we will. Um, and and we're, we're happy to take any of you guys' comments and concerns and continue to work with you and hope you guys can approve this project and allow us to show you. Thank you. Councilman Bazil. Just trying to follow this through. If you, you come off of um, McDowell and you make a right, where would that be? To, what are you going to do? You're going to go into the, I, I assume, to do the vacuum first, right? No. Yeah. So if you're if you're coming off of the off of McDowell Road, can you show me probably with the uh, mouse there, Steve? So you're coming off McDowell Road. Thanks. You're going to go down, get into one of those little car uh, vacuum spots, right? Do the vacuum. All right. Now, say, for example, you're done with the vacuum, then where are you going to go? Going to go back up? Mayor, council members, if, if you would like the car wash then. My mouse is here again. Right. As you come out, you can then come out here and enter the queue, pay, and get your car wash. And then, again, when you leave, go west, back out to McDowell. Uh, you can also take that north-south drive back down to one of the center aisles if you wanted to then uh, get out to Bullock. And that's, that's what I was trying to figure out right there. Um, if they go up and make a right on McDowell, there is nowhere to make a left unless they make a U-turn there on Bullock. And I assume you're going to... At the light. Yeah. At the light, you're going you're gonna to probably put that up. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about when you go up north there. All right, make a right onto McDowell at the light there where Bullard is. If you want to go west, you got to make a U-turn. So I assume you'll discourage about U-turns there, right? Well, no, there's a left turn arrow there. Yeah, but that's the only way if you want to turn around. Well, I guess it's... It's safe to do it. Is it? Yeah, because you have a left turn lane. Yeah, coming off I guess. Of McDowell, and you turn left coming up from Cheddar's and that. You go up to the yeah, light you're right. There is a light there. It's, it's safe. If you, want to go, if you want to go the other direction... You say there's another way of going down? Say that again. Um, Mayor, council members, there's a couple ways. If you exit the car wash, you take okay. a left, there'll be a future north-south drive here ah, that you okay. can take south. Or you can go through this way, potentially through QT, if you had another errand to run here.
But then either way, you can end up at this east-west drive here, which would then give you access to Bullard. Okay. But it is restricted here right in, right out. Do you own the one at uh, 51st and Camelback? 51st Avenue and Camelback? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. I pass it all the time going to Grand Canyon, so I was just kind of curious. There's a car wash there. Yeah. All right. Okay, that's all my questions. I am concerned about the sound uh, getting through there, but you've got uh, some stipulations in there that we can monitor that, make sure those disciplined uh, are within. Okay. Bill? Steve, for a uh, a fast food restaurant. You're going to follow me on this because then everyone's like, this is a freaking car wash. What are you talking about? So for a fast food restaurant, we do not allow the uh, speaker device, that part of the thing to be on the, to be on the roadway. Correct. Mayor, council members. Yes, the drive-through pickup windows there you go. do Thank not you. face uh, public street. Yes. But if it does, it has to be screened. Mm -hmm. Do we allow a 42-inch screening on those drive-through windows and pickups? Because the ones that we have are covered entirely, and the, the one that comes to my mind is the Dairy Queen on McDowell. It is fully screened. Mayor, council members, yes, how we do that is with typically the developers will put a canopy over the drive through window. And then like uh, Panera Bread was mentioned, then they'll sometimes put a green screen or something along the street. Right. But it, and it generally exceeds 42 inches in height. The canopy? Yes, sir. Yeah. So... Um, we're basically talking about a wall of this size to quote unquote screen the opening to the car wash that faces McDowell, which is going to be our pre, I hate to use the word premier, but we've created uh, an, an entire district from Bullard to Pebble Creek with this area. And now we're going to put a car wash there, which is nothing wrong with the car wash, but we aren't even going to screen it the way we would screen a drive through I mean, I kind of have a problem with that. Um, the noise is the noise. Um, there's no question about the quality of, um, of the product. I think um, I would say anywhere, almost anywhere else in the city, this would, would be approved without, a, without much of a discussion. But the fact that this is on McDowell, for me, gives me a lot of heartburn. Um, the car wash that we approved on Pebble Creek Parkway, uh, which fronts Pebble Creek Parkway, you don't even know exists because the building is the screen. So you don't see the vacuum stations. You don't see, I mean, you see nothing. You don't even know that it's there. Um, that was a, that was a win for us as a council. Um, is this really what we want? If you can go to that aerial shot, the dirt aerial. Is this really what we want here uh, on McDowell across from what is now going to be the rest of uh, the Grace Properties um, development of what used to be the mall? I, I'm, I have a really hard time with that. Um, I think there's a million other places in the city that this can go, just not here. Um, I'm, I kind of have some heartburn with that. Um, yeah, we've, we've taken the steps to mitigate the sound, and I appreciate, I really appreciate you guys committing to the sound. Um, so if I am in the minority, at least I can sleep tonight knowing that we'll at least be protected from the sound. But um, I, if you look back over the last probably 10 years, I am rarely a no vote on, on development projects, but this one I may very well be unless somebody has something really outstanding to, to sway, because I just don't think this fits. 
and then a side comment to this entire property. I was just at that ho one of those hotels this weekend. I happen to have family in, and there is absolutely no way for you to go north out of there without hanging a dangerous U-turn at one of those intersections. And I am and was embarrassed that we allowed a development of this size to go in without the ability to traverse north-south coming out of there or in east-west. And now we're going to add a car wash and a quick trip to this with the same problem. The deal over at Pebble Creek and McDowell is you can go out at the traffic light that's in. We don't have that here. We have nothing here, so we are we are creating a problem at this particular location that we are going to suffer from until something develops further west of there. Um, I, I don't want to add. I don't want to add to that. Councilman Lovertano. Yes, I. The traffic really does kind of bother me. The the u-turn because bullard right now it's there's some very busy times on that road and it's um it's just going to get busier as that fills up um i voted no on the um i'm like bill i don't usually vote no but i did vote no on the car wash that we put on estrella for the same reasons that you mentioned on this one where our um industry where our corridor some entertainment corridor is going to go i don't know if this is the right spot i do appreciate but i do have some of the mitigation, I appreciate the mitigation you're doing, but I, I do have concern that it's right by those hotels. It's going to be the quick trip itself has a better ingress and egress because it is right on the corner. So this one, they're either going to be cutting through, you know, if you want to get there, you're going to be driving through the gas station, which again leads to a lot more traffic. I'm just not seeing how it's a good fit. So that's just kind of where I am right now. I'm just not seeing it. And Laura, the council member Kano brought up some very, very good points as well. So um, I, I'm just not there. Sorry. Council member Hampton. Will that interior road be built with this project? The right hand turn out there? Mayor, council members, the improvements. This drive is in, this yeah. one will be put in with QT. With QT, okay. And then, do we know who owns the pad directly? Is there a spot, there's dirt right between that and that road, inner road and them right here, correct? Yeah, that one there. Mayor, council members, last I checked, the county assessor QT was the owner of all three of these huh. so I know we got they got the letter from because that was okay for that and do you know who own, I know I thought there's gonna be a restaurant south directly south of this that dirt right there that says hotels that area is that user maybe I'm maybe I'm not correct <laughs> Mayor and Council, over the years we have had a few pre-apps in this area and we did have a restaurant at one time Left. express interest here, but we have, I personally have not heard from them in a couple of years, so. Mm -hmm. I know that's what the hotel wants. That's what they told me, is a restaurant there. Yeah, so, yeah, right now I think the traffic is how it is, but I think if we, when and if they do build that northern exit that will definitely help that entire plaza it'll be a right hand turn yeah you can do a u-turn or whatever you need to do but okay i was just curious on the users and i do appreciate i know you guys are high quality and i do appreciate all the sit down mitigation efforts um yeah i don't know i'm getting i'm feeling swayed that i don't know if this is the, the right location or not but um I do think it's a high quality product. All right, thank you. Councilman Campbell. Well, I just know my community was excited when they heard a QT was coming in because they did not want to have to drive all the way down Pebble Creek Parkway. There's no gas station close to us unless we go down to Safeway and you know what the prices are there. 
and then we have to go down Pebble Creek Parkway to that QT. And I know once that QT opened, it was the busiest one they had. And I do know that we've got hotels there. We want the visitors to come in. We're going to get people off of I-10 to come in. They're going to be driving forever or however long they're going to drive. They're going to come in and spend the night. If they get up the next morning, they're going to look for a gas station. And there's not anyone around there. And they're going to have to figure out, you know, they can find the food because Red Robin and P.F. Chang's is that way. And they know McDonald's is down on the corner. But um, I really think that this, while you complain about the traffic, I get it. I understand it. But you can wait 50 years for something else to come in. And it's still going to cause I know. Traffic. You're talking about car wash. But when you're traveling... The first thing we look for when we travel is a car wash to clean our windshields and wash the outside, depending on where we're coming from. And then we get fill up with gas and then we get on our way. And we do that or used to do that everywhere. And we'd always ask, where's a car wash? Because we don't sometimes drive it. We drive at night and it'd be full of bugs. We need to get a car cleaned. I think having a QT and a car wash together makes sense on that corner. Um, I think we're going to look at having even maybe another hotel coming across the street and down, supposedly, I thought, someday. Um, I mean, we're looking for tourism. We're looking to for people to come and stay. And you're right. It's terrible to get out of the, those two hotels. And we did it ourselves. I don't know why we didn't put a light in or why we didn't figure this out. Um, but we didn't. And uh, so now we need to just figure out how if they can get off and on on McDowell, then they can go north, south, or east or west. That's the cue. And then if they're just getting back up on the freeway, they can go right down Bullard. So um, I think it's a great project myself. I, I, I like it, and my, my residents wanted to have a QT. And it's a good product. And, and this, they sell so much on the inside, we're going to have a tax revenue coming out of there with the food and everything. Laura? Yeah, so I'd like to return back to Councilman Stipp on your uh, traffic comment. So I, I, I'm not sure I exactly, and I think Councilwoman Loretano, you you uh, echoed that a little bit. I'm not exactly sure um, from the car wash itself what the concern is for traffic or if it's just the infrastructure currently in place at the city. It it was not related to the to the car wash. My comment was related to just what we've done there in general. Um, my objection to the car wash is simply it doesn't belong in that spot. That, that's that's my only, and and there's that is what it is. But the rest of the comments regarding traffic, et cetera, are on what self-inflicted wounds we are putting upon ourselves in that particular area by not having a, a an east-west place. So. It, those two issues are completely separate from one another. One of the things I wanted to comment in regards to that traffic is the co-use of the same traffic that Quick Trip is already using. The other thing is the pass by in nature in which our car wash benefits from. So unlike Quick Trip, we are not a destination location. Our business comes from the daily travel heading east, west, or north, south, Boulder to McDowell. Um, we also benefit from Quick Trip being a destination using that cross access. So that traffic is really already there. Um, it's entering the property, it's exiting the property, it's making its circulation internal and external. And so I wanted to elaborate on that a little bit because the use, I think, if nothing else, provides a reduced traffic count. And, and I think if you'll uh, go into a little bit of the traffic report that we uh, furnished to the city and, and, and their review is that it showed as such, you know, that, that we reduced the, the traffic count. If you compared it to maybe another user that would come in there, a QSR or, or something of that nature, uh, which would be a high traffic generating destination uh, use. And so I just wanted to point that out, you know, and, and just give you a little feedback on that with our operation that, excuse me, generally speaking, we are passed by in nature and that we, we do share a lot, the, the majority 
uh, of our traffic back and forth with QT is very much shared and it's not in addition to. We have other questions. So who's, excuse me, who's here? Are you Laura? Yeah. Okay. Councilman Kano. Regarding the, the location, um, you know, it, it's interesting. Uh, the, Bullard Avenue is turning out to be really a significant gateway into Goodyear. And when you head south, it's our tech corridor leads onto the, the ballpark. Uh, across the street to the north is going to develop into something. We don't know what, there's, um, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, when you look towards Lifetime Fitness, there's going to be more commercial. Um, and even across the street by P.F. Chang's, more commercial. So the traffic is definitely going to increase. I think that, you know, definitely the quick trip has been decided. It's been approved. It's a welcome addition to our community. I, I know it's going to, to thrive and do well, and it's going to attract a lot of people. I just, um, you know, we've put some gems here with the hotels. We're getting that Class A office space that is something that we valued. Hopefully a, a um, restaurant or, or two in there. If you just look at the area in totality, it is a part of our entertainment district, but I'm really, I, I just can't get off the noise and the property, and I'm not sure why you're being held to a higher noise standard than any other car wash in the city, um, because they're noisy. I've driven by them. I, I, I listen to the blowers, and I, I don't know how you can mitigate it to the point where it's it's not um, going to be disruptive to the um, people are trying to enjoy hotels and restaurants and things. You might want to give her an example of the one that happened on Australia. If you're familiar with it, the car wash, you know which one I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. we are as well. That's where this problem came from, was that location. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they had to mitigate it after the fact. Um, and Christopher's here now. Maybe he recognized what I said. Was I correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. Mayor, council, thank you. Um, the stipulations regarding the noise. Um, so the city has evolved over time. Um, your council's right. The city did have a bad experience with a, a previous car wash that created some unforeseen and unanticipated negative impacts for adjacent, adjacent businesses and property owners. The stipulations that you see that Steve elaborated in the presentation tonight are a direct result of the lessons that we learned previously. So that, I forgot who asked the question why we have a different standard on this one. It's because we learned from um, our previous uh, experiences. So that's why the noise stipulations are the way they are with this particular case. Thank you for that explanation. Yes, ma'am. Are you still caught, Laura? Did you have other things? Anybody else? Well, I'm going to talk. <laughs> I, I think it's a good location. I'm, I agree with uh, Councilman Campbell. Um, people have been really wanting those things off Bullard. Got a lot of neighborhoods there, and we do travel that quite frequently. Uh, and, the, and the traffic is heavier there now than ever before. But I think. The hotel wants things, okay? Uh, they definitely do. And, and something like a restaurant, and they like, because people are coming off and staying there on the weekend. I mean, this is a busy area. It's visible from the highway, so it attracts travelers. And I have to agree with Wally that car washes may not be to us personally. And we do have a very strong feeling when we decide things about our personal life and what we know was right and what was dealt before and what you can't do. Uh, I do think you can mitigate the traffic. I think there's a way that you can work this through this. Um, and um, so I'm in, I'm in favor of this. And I appreciate the fact that well, the blowers and the you know, additional equipment or the technical that you're going to put in there that will help that. And we're already doing a sound check, so I mean that certainly is a great protector. So it looks like we're not in the popular one here tonight, but I would hate to have it turned down. And um, then I'm just going to say to people, the way that is designed, that piece of land that's backed up there behind there, what do you think is going to go in there? 
What's going to go right behind the quick trick? Are you going to put a restaurant there? Mm -mm. I don't know. Maybe put a dress shop there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But when you start looking at that location, um, it fits. Um, and so I'm going to be voting for this. Any other comments? No comments? All right. You're not, you're not pulling. Okay, so we're going to vote on this, all right? I want a roll call. I want a roll call vote, please. So, Vice Mayor Hampton? I want to go nay. Councilmember Pizzillo? Nay. Councilmember Loritano? Nay. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Stepp? Nay. Councilmember Kano? Nay. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion no. fails. So the motion is designed. Thank you very much. All right, we're on number 10. Last public hearing item is to approve a request for a use permit for an A, convenience use for, for Jamba McAllister Deli Restaurant with a drive through I hope that I got that right. Open a public hearing. Oh, Steve, you're on again. Mayor, council members, use permit, Jamba McAllister's Deli. Where we are, still along McDowell Road, but here's Palm Valley Boulevard, Cornerstone wrapping around. Uh, this is Lowe's J.C. Penny here, Dairy Queen. Subject property right here. All this property is zoned commercial uh, within Palm Valley. To the north, uh, we do have residential, existing residential. Access to this property, we do have existing right in, right out here. Uh, we also have several access points from Cornerstone, uh, cross access, shared parking throughout the entire center. So this is a large commercial center. Here's Lowe's, J.C. Penney, uh, Palm Valley Cornerstone, uh, zoning in 1989, 2001. Again, all commercial uses throughout this development. And so tonight's request, uh, commercial, general commercial, a uh, convenience use is required for this use permit. It's a 1.9 acre parcel. Uh, surrounding site improvements, they are complete. It's really just the pad that is the dirt right now. And on that dirt, they do plan to put about a 45, 98 square foot building. So it'll be a single building. Uh, however, there'll be two users within this building with two separate drive-throughs. And along with the drive-through use, we do have indoor dining and an outdoor patio. And so this is the site plan, uh, McDowell Road. Here's that north-south drive right here. Here's Cornerstone. So for the drive-through component, we'll enter in here, both drive-throughs. So for the McAllister's Deli, that's going to take basically this west side of the building. This is going to be a different type of drive-through. This is going to be remote, remote order only. So you'll place your order online on your phone, and you'll get a time, and you'll come pick it up from this window right here. So you notice there's not a lot of stacking here because there's no ordering in the line. You're just given a time and you'll show up, pick up your order, and you'll exit the site. Now the Jamba Juice line, that's more of a conventional drive-through. We'll have ordering points along the drive-through, and then you'll pick up your food here at this window. So you have queuing now for several cars required because it's the conventional drive-through. And then customers will then exit here. Again, you can go left, right, however you need to exit the site. And again, we do have indoor dining 
for both of these uses, as well as an outdoor patio right here. And for this site, they do have all of their parking, required parking on site. But again, we have a cross access shared parking for this center. And these are the elevations from the McAllister's and Jamba. And they did incorporate all of the colors, materials that are required for Palm Valley Cornerstone. And like before, we do have those two criteria that we look at for all of our use permits. And probably the main one here that we wanted to look at was we had residential across the street. So we want to ensure that there was no noise or light trespass. So uh, what we did look at is we had a good separation of 130 feet with McDowell Road. And then we had a larger 40 foot landscape buffer in between. So we have all this existing landscape here in this separation. Uh, there are also stipulations of approval that were required initially when the zoning was entitled that we carried forth, uh, limiting trash pickup hours, uh, lighting, so we don't have noise or light trespass into this existing neighborhood. Then the parcel size is sufficient for both of the uses. They were able to queue all their traffic on site without impacting any public streets. There are hours of operation, not too late, so we were fine with that. All the off-site improvements, everything is complete. So basically have, given we had residential across the street, we did send out notices and offer an in-person neighborhood meeting because we did want to see, get any opinions from the residents across the street. Uh, so we had that meeting on October 25th. Uh, we did not have anybody from the public attend the meeting. Uh, to date, staff has not received any opposition or public inquiries on this project. And we did conduct all of the notice as required. And again, we had no, received no public opposition. Uh, PNZ commission meeting was October 13th. Uh, no public opposition voice there either. Uh, we do find it complies with all of our criteria. Staff and the commission, we are both recommending approval subject to the nine stipulations in the staff report. Uh, Mayor, that concludes my presentation. Uh, the applicant is here to answer any questions if you have. They do not have a formal presentation. Okay. All right. So we'll call you up when you don't have any presentation to make. I think he does. Yeah, you'll have to put that microphone closer to you. I don't think your phone. I don't think it's on because I, I thought maybe it was me again. Is that better? Yeah, that's Sorry. better. <laughs> Um, my name is Kirk Farrelly. I'm with Capital Growth Thought Culture. Um, we're a developer out of Birmingham, Alabama. We are a preferred developer for Focus Brands, which is the parent company of McAllister's, Jamba, and several other restaurant concepts. Um, this is actually the first dual concept that, that we're doing in the whole country. Um, we're hoping to replicate this in other uh, little municipality cities in this area. Um, but I'm here for any questions that you may have. And my engineer with Kimley Horn is here. We well. appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, so we're back to council. Could you do me a favor before you do? Can you put up the site plan while we're talking? Yeah, that would help. And tell me again before they start, tell us where other things are located within that area. Mayor, council members, this area or wider? or surrounding? No, just, 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 just around it. Yeah. Just, just Where's Booties? Where McDowell Road is north of yeah. the mill. Yeah. That one. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, who wants to start off? Mayor? I need to. Mayor? Uh, over here. Um, you're still in the public hearing. Oh, I've got to um, close. Up there are people. no um, speaker cards. All right, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Want any bar? Yes, I'll ask. Will the audience like to speak? All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. Can I have a motion a second to approve the request for a use permit for a convenient used restaurant with a drive-through on a 
1.88 acre parcel within the Palm Valley Phase One planned area development subject to stipulation. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Kano and a second from Councilman Lortano. Open for council discussion. I'm going to go right here with Councilman Campbell. So, do you mind, Steve, telling us what's around the property? I mean, uh, the maps are great, but is it by Dairy Queen? Mm -hmm. yeah, is it where Jamba Juice is on the very end now of the end of the street? Oh, Jamba Juice over there. And that's a catty corner from Dairy Queen? Or are they building a separate building? Because that parking lot is a mess. <laughs> Mayor, council members. Uh, Good point of reference. This is the existing Dairy Queen right here. So it's further down. Yes, further west. So there'll be this parking lot, then we'll start this pad right here. This will be Jamba and McAllister's right here. What's this road right here? This is Palm Valley Boulevard. Okay, so you're going to, all right, in... Then that we're gonna, goes towards the hospital. Correct. If you go this way, you're into all of the medical complex. So that's going to be by West Valley Hospital on one side or at Rebrazis, and then 1355 West McDowell. And another medical office. Another there. medical building. Right there. Yeah, got it. It's, it's on up there. Yeah. Okay. Pardon me? Tropical smoothie, because I think that's the yep. one you're talking about, just so yep. you've got a good frame of reference there. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Councilman Hampton? Do you go back to the traffic the traffic flow? I, I'm i excited for this, so, so welcome. I do, hopefully it passes tonight, but I just had a question on just the traffic, it's just unique. It's unique that what I've seen before, so so I come in at the red arrow, and then I go down. I get to choose two queues. I can choose the one that can go to McAllister, but I only use McAllister if I use my mobile app. And then if I get out of there, I can take a left turn or a straight down, either or. Right, left, or straight. Okay. And, but then if I'm queuing for the Jamba Juice, then I go to the bottom, the bottom one, take that all the way through and around. Okay, so but it's just a longer more optional drive than I'm used to, I guess. And then if I go out north there, I can take a left and connect. Is that a left? And go all the way out and left and go back out that little side street there. Okay. I'm just trying to figure it out. And the patio, I can use, I can eat inside here, park my car, get out, and go to both locations. Yes, correct? sir. Okay. Just yeah, there'll to... be an opening inside um, for both locations, but they'll each have their own identity. Order. Okay. Yeah, I haven't used, I guess, well, I'm trying to think the mobile, the mobile option is probably COVID and everything related to, so I was just curious how that worked, how that would, I know I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm just curious. It's just different than we're used to. Um, and then I think that was the main thing. Do we, I guess, screening, it doesn't face too. the roads with her, but screening, um, yeah, I'm excited for you. I'm that is, thank you for choosing us for a the first concept too. I hope it works in this plaza. This plaza has a light, like we talked about. It has a lot more access. It has um, a lot of good things going on here. So yeah, I'm I'm excited. I think it'll do well. Um, but it's said clarify, clarifying on kind of the unique aspects of the drive through. It is unique, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. thank you. Councilmember Loretano. Uh, thank you very much. I, I'm glad that this um, this is a, like in a pretty good position. It's really close to the light off of Palm Valley, so people can easily get in, go right, go left, onto McDowell. And there's several other lights into the, the shopping center as, as, as well, but at least that one on McDowell um, is, a, is a good way. My only question is, um, with the two drive-throughs, how is it going to work if the one lane blocks the other lane? I, I guess that's kind of a concern. The lane has to come through this during the mobile pickup. I mean, are you going to have someone there? Is there going to be a stop? How are you going to work be, it so we don't mess it up? 
um, there'll be ample signage and we'll have the, the pavement striping will be gored so that it's just going to say do not block. Um, and then I think once people get accustomed to, to using it on a repeat basis, it'll, it'll make sense for everybody involved. Okay, because that's always been my big concern is when we have these queues that are either blocking people who, I think it's up at the um, Popeye's Chicken just up here on the corner of um, Pebble Creek Parkway where people, the queues are so long, they're blocking in people who are trying to park. So I just don't want anyone blocked in because then that's just going to make the mobile pickup order if you've got people. So Sure, and you know. Jamba is more of a consistent throughout the day. Um, Water Point, and then McAllister's will have its lunch peaks and then dinner peaks as well. So the deli is the one that you call in for? Yes, ma'am. Okay, gotcha. You either okay. call in or order online. Oh, welcome. And to we'll people. likely have curbside um, spaces where the staff can bring out the orders to people that want to park at the front uh, by the accessible spaces. Did you say call in? Or you can call and they'll bring it out to you. Or order, order up, like where they have a designated. See a menu. And yeah, you can walk in too. It's three options. But they hardly ever have traffic. You can walk in like that. like old fashioned. You can go in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. In a minute, Councilman Kano. I think this is a good infill project. I think uh, it is unique seeing two separate drive-throughs uh, converging into one. So thank you for talking about the the how you're going to. Um, paint the intersection. Will the line into Jamba Juice and have a stop? Will they have to stop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to stop both. That okay. way each is, and then we're not yielding the, to it. Do not block. And, mm -hmm. and then, yes, uh, have you done this before? No, this is the first one in the country. Okay. Well. First dual concept. We do McAllister's Deli throughout the country, but this is the first dual concept. Okay. Well, it's creative, it, it, and uh, it looks like there's enough room for that. Thank you. Councilmember Stiff. Steve, can you go back to the colored aerial? That one. So I was very nervous uh, when I saw the location because that parking lot, as Councilmember Campbell mentioned, is a mess. Yes. But it's really a mess where the DQ and that little uh, yes. strip center right south of it it's, it's a mess right there. The fact that you're farther west, I think, is a big benefit, and it's going to help the flow on this particular project. I am um, I'm a, uh, ecstatic about McAllister's. Um, I've been a uh, – that's a go-to place when I'm on the road, so I'm excited that we're finally getting one here. For sure. Um, you know, and, and I guess I'm evolving. If you say you're going to take this for a spin and see if you can get them both to work at the same place, that's awesome. Uh, keep in mind, we have plenty of other places for a full-on McAllister's, too. So okay. I put the pitch in there. But, um, no, I, I think um, the fact that we've got so little activity to the west of this, mm -hmm. and is that tree line going to – because that looks like trees right to the east of that property. Is that tree line going to stay? Where it starts at the work at the Y and property that green space right there. Is I that, believe so. Yeah, there's space between our parking lot and their edge. Of yeah. Parking lot. So th that's even another win on uh, for, for this particular project. So I'm super excited. I appreciate you guys picking us for this and keep us in mind. Well, to answer your first point, um, the franchisee for this is an experienced job operator, and he has signed an agreement for McAllisters for this whole area. So we'll we'll pass that along to you. Yeah, we've got plenty of other places. Thank you. Councilman Zillow. Yeah, I, th I think you picked a great location. I think you're going to have walk-up business. You've got the Cigna facility just to the west of you. That, that's a Cigna facility, that medical office. And then just the south of you, you got another uh, medical facility where you got a lot of people working in there during the day that can walk over to your place at lunchtime. So, I mean, you couldn't have picked a better spot in there. And I don't know if you get too many coming from the office over across, but the thing is, you've got a lot of clientele just right around the corner there. So I, I think it's a very good location. I'll let our site finder know. Thank you. Any other comments from council? Did you have a comment? Councilman Campton, did you have a comment? No. All right. Thank you. And then all you're all finished. Well, I think it's a great place. Thank you. And uh, I can tell you what was just said is about that medical office. 
uh, the one and actually across the street from it um, has a, a great clientele for that. They take young children there. I mean, the process of that hospital is so unique that they're going to cross the street and use your facility and want, want to buy something there. And just like they said, all the hospital, the medical office, all of that will be your customers because it is walkable. Yes, ma'am. So, and I think it's about time we had a, a deli restaurant, don't you? Yes. Um, everybody that moves here from all over the country always wants to know where the deli restaurant is, and we've never had that. So to me, I think we're growing. That, that's, that's a good growth for us to have that restaurant. So I appreciate you wanting to come to our city and, and build the first one. So Perhaps. any other comments? Okay, let's vote on it. All of, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations. Welcome to Goodyear. All right, let's go to the business. I'd like to remind the council to wait. Something's wrong. Can we take a break? Oh, sure. It's not something I did wrong this time. We're going to take a 10-minute break. It's 7.58. Perfect. We'll say it's 8 o'clock and take a 10-minute.
can't hear me. There we go. All right, we've gone to the business section and remind council to wait for a motion a second before the discussion. Am I right place before I start? Thank you. All right, thumbs up, Bill. Thank you. The first item is to consider approving the comprehensive sign package for Goodyear Professional Plaza. Please introduce yourself and present it. Mayor, council members, Steve Correccia, principal planner. And we have a comprehensive sign package for council consideration tonight. A very familiar parcel. This is Bullard McDowell. We're here at the hotel parcel right here. So, just, and just for reference, we were talking about QT and the car wash just right here. So we're a little further south. We have a hotel going in right now and they're looking at amending the sign package for the center. And again, some of the history of the center, we have zoning, we have existing comprehensive sign package approved in 2010. Uh, however, what happened was that sign package did not anticipate an office building. It was geared more for retail uses and predominantly was developed for the hotel users. So what we're looking at is that two-story office building, about 25,000 square feet, not really having signage geared towards its users. So for the city, we do allow comprehensive sign packages and you can request modifications with those signed packages. But if so, then it must come before the commission and council. So that's why you're looking and evaluating it tonight. So what this comprehensive sign package is looking at is wall signs on the building for the various office tenants and also one monument sign along Bullard Avenue. And with this CSP comes the modifications one of those modifications is the, the monument sign along Bullard that would be something additional, as well as a larger wall sign for one of the elevations of the office building, and that would be the north side of the building. And this just gives you a bigger picture of the overall center. A little reversed here, McDowell's here, Bullard. And this just shows you the 2010 sign package, how it distributed ground signs, the monument signs for the center. So in 2010, they had given two along McDowell and then two along Bullard. So with this office parcel here at I-10 and Bullard, they would ask for another monument sign. With this monument signage, the tenants for the office users would be specifically designated for those users. And with these three exhibits, this top one here just shows you the four elevations of the office building. And it shows you the different sign envelopes that could happen along the first and second story of the building. Uh, should a larger tenant come in, maybe it takes half the building, you know, half the floor, then it would adjust accordingly. So you would have just you know, a centered sign band instead of several smaller bands. And the applicant is also looking at incorporating some branding along their building. Mm -hmm. This is the one monument sign along Bullard that they are proposing, 14 and a half feet with the 14 different tenants proposed. Uh, the design of this monument sign, it's a little different from the monument signs approved for the rest of the center. However, this signage, the materials, colors, they match the office building. So that was the direction that we wanted to go. And this is showing a plan view of the site plan for the office building. And again, just showing you that the intent is to allow the office tenants to have signage. So we would have opportunities for signage along four sides of the building. And with that modification, it increases the sign allocation for just this elevation here. And partly that is due to some of the branding that kind of pushed them over the limit that they otherwise would have been, that they otherwise would have met, but that pushed them over limit a little bit. 
So for CSP, there are criteria that we look at in our sign code of compatibility, visibility, does it provide an enhanced design? So in looking at this parcel at the development proposed, the user's intended, uh, it's in a, as interstate frontage, it's in a commercial corridor. We have hotels, other commercial users in the area. The letters, the wall signs proposed for the building, <coughs> there'll be metal letters with backlighting. So that's more of an enhanced look that will match what was approved with the rest of the center. Uh, we find the monument sign, again, that complements the design of the office building. Heights and size, they're consistent with what's other signage in the area and its location next to a freeway and within an intense commercial corridor. So we find it meets our evaluation criteria. We found the two modifications are acceptable. Uh, staff and the planning commission, uh, we are both recommending approval subject to uh, the two stipulations within the staff report. Uh, Mayor, that concludes my presentation. Staff's available for questions. I do not believe the applicant is here. I believe he is too, thank you. Would the applicant like to speak? Okay, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. I would have to ask the question, would it anybody in the audience like to speak? <laughs> no, so can I have a motion a second to approve the supplemental comprehensive sign package for lot 3C of the Minor Land Division, lot three, recorded in the official records of Maricopa County on June 25th, 2019, at book 1463 of the maps, page 48, the Goodyear Professional Plaza, subject to stipulations. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Stiff and a staff from Councilman Bazillo. Open for council discussion. Councilman Campbell. Steve, what's the size of the lettering? I'm not in favor of any lettering being any bigger than what's already on the hotels. Because we stipulated what size they could have on their buildings. So I think we need to be consistent if it's such an important corridor that everything is the same size. Mayor, you know what Council the size Member. is for the true Hilton and for the Spring Hill? Or? I do not know the exact sizes for the two hotels. For the office building, the signage is capped by the sign band. So we did not have a maximum or minimum letter height just an allocation, you would get copy area so much, depending on your size of your lease space. So the size of heights of letters, mm -hmm. it would be up to the user. They can have as big as they want because our, the hotel doesn't have huge signs on there and they're a business. And it's hard to see them from the freeway. If, if I could inter- about Faith Law up, or you're talking about the signage for the... Talking that Faith Law wants to put Faith Law on the front of their building, uh -huh. and they are in front okay. of those two I did, hotels. I didn't know if you were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, the two hotels the, have a little stand -up signs sign. up there. So... Mayor, if, if I could... I just think we need to be consistent. Yes. I had done some research on that, and um, just to... I think it was back in 2010... Those signs for the hotels is what they had requested, so they weren't restricted by um, the city's rules, is my understanding. I know that so many of our businesses that are, do face the, the arterials don't have their signage up on the back side because we were so stringent with the signs, we didn't allow them. So I just want to be consistent. I just don't want us to go overboard on that corner. So there's, you can do anything you want to then. Oh. Mayor, council members. The yes. The faith law sign is about three and a half feet tall. God, that's almost as tall as I am. <laughs> well, Whoa. you're not that high up. No. But they're only two-story, right? Okay, Christopher, you Mayor, have my permission to go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, Council, just for just to dovetail on what Steve indicated, the the way this works is the sign, the signage for the building gets a square footage, and so 
the user can decide how tall they want their individual letters and things of that nature. We just calculate the square footage. So if you get 30 square feet, you could do, you know, Whatever. small letters. You could do bigger letters, but a smaller sign width-wise. So it, it, it provides the users the flexibility that they would like for their signage, if that answers your question. Yes, I it think does. It and does. you do tell all the hotels that they can have the signs as big as they want, as long as it's the square footage signs. As Julie pointed out, the this we did not tell the hotels no. That is ex the signage that's there is the signage that they requested. Okay, thank you. Any other? Well, I would say I think it has a great design. I think it looks really good, uh, and I think it'll be complimentary to the hotel. So I'm very pleased with what I see tonight. So um, discussion is finished. Can we vote for this? All in the favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. But the ayes have it. Let's go on to number 12. The final item on the business is consider approving a third amendment to the Development and Fire Services Agreement. Christopher Baker, Development Services. Thank you, Mayor, Council. I have a 72 slide PowerPoint presentation I'm going to give to you tonight. Next. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. I like that. Um, just real briefly tonight, Mayor, Council, thank you very much. This is a, a revision to the development agreement that the city already has executed. This is the third revision. Mm -hmm. This development uh, agreement goes back to the mid 2000s, 2006, I believe. And it essentially. Um, capped the uh, capital contribution that the developers in the region, the developers of EMR and Cantamia would contribute to the city. That cap is at uh, 5.8 million, and so I'm rounding, but 5.8 million. And that is also what is the reimbursed, what is eligible to be reimbursed. The only thing we're doing with this amendment tonight is changing the mechanism of reimbursement. We're not changing the dollars and we're not changing the cents. The way that the it, as it sits currently, they get repaid with impact fee credits. So there's actually pieces of paper that we have to trade back and forth and we have to track. The revision that's proposed tonight is to actually make it a reimbursement. So on a quarterly basis, the city would cut a check through the finance department. Mm -hmm. uh, that would then be provided to the interested parties who have the legal rights to it. Um, so we're just changing the mechanism of the reimbursement. We're not changing the dollar amounts or anything of that nature. And that's essentially what, we're, what it is we're doing tonight. Um, we worked in collaboration with our friends in EMR and also in Cantamia. They're on board with this. They would rather have the funds as opposed to tracking credits on their side too. And that makes a ton of sense from an operational standpoint as well. And I will say that any reimbursement dollars that are sent to them come from the permits that they pay. So we're not advancing any money. It's a reimbursement after they paid for the permits. And with that, Mayor, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. All right. Um, so are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Will the city clerk please read resolution number 2021-2182 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2021-2182, approving the third amendment to development and fire services agreement, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out the intent of the resolution and development agreement and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to adopt resolution 2021-2182? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard uh, Councilman Hampton motion, second from Councilman Kano, open for council discussion. Councilman Siff? I can see why Cantamia and Newland or there would be happy with that, but is Doug happy with that? <laughs> That's <laughs> he, has, he has to write the check, so. But other than that, I don't have any objection. I think it's fine. Any other comments? All right, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, we did pretty well. It's not quite 830. So council, have any comments or reports on current events? Well, I just want to thank you all for attending Westmark um, okay, and fine. being a part of my, my accomplishment. So thank you very much. And as I said that night, 
I couldn't have accomplished it without you and without staff. That I'm the face, but I tell you what, behind it is everybody sitting in this room and City Hall and around this table. So I greatly appreciate it. Uh, city Manager, do you have anything to say? Really? Well, that's great. <laughs> the work session scheduled for November 1st was canceled for a lack of agenda items. So the next meeting will be a work session following a regular meeting on November 8th. 2021 beginning at 5 and no further business to discuss this meeting's adjourned.